Praise the Lord. We are back with our book of Psalms. And today it is Psalm 44040. And it says here, it's another Psalm of David. <clears throat> David says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry and also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. David is talking about the salvation of the Lord. In the spirit, David knew what the salvation of the Lord means, what it means. In the spirit, the Lord had revealed to him how wonderfully the work of salvation God has wrought for mankind. How he has done for mankind, he has made a way through the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly speaking those words, how a person could come out of sin into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. From sin, to, from sin to saint, from darkness to light. And that is what David is saying here. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry and brought me out of the horrible pit. That means he waited for the Lord because it was not the time of salvation during his time. God was revealing in the spirit what Jesus would come and do. And that is what Jesus came and do did. Jesus heard the cry of a sinner. He heard the cry of a repentant heart. Those that can repent before the Lord and cry out to the Lord, the Lord hears his cry. And he says, out of the horrible pit, you know, out of that horrible pit, the situation that man is in when he sins. When man comes into the world, that Adamic nature is within us, that sinful nature is within us, and no one can deliver us from that. No religion, no way of life, no good works, nothing can deliver us. Because man always likes to practice and do things to please God. But nothing could help us. It's a horrible pit. David has used right words over here. You brought me out of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay, that loose mud where it is sinking sand, where a person keeps going down. The more he tries to get up in that sinking sand, the deeper he will go in. That is what they say happens in sinking sand. I don't know, I have never had that experience, but we have seen. We have seen in videos, we have seen in movies, how people enter a marshy land and there the sand is so slushy, it is so miry, that a person starts sinking into the mud. And unless he gets help from outside, he cannot come out. The more he struggles, the deeper he goes in. But when a person lies still on the mud, then he does not sink. But the more he struggles, the deeper he goes. So that is what miry clay means over here. He says, horrible pit and miry clay. That is what sin is. That is what happens to a man when he falls into sin. And the more he struggles, the deeper he goes. The more he tries on his own, the deeper he goes. The more, more man tries to become a good person, a better person, the worse it gets for him. He cannot help himself. And because man could not help himself, God help man. That is why Jesus Christ came down. Jesus came to help those that could not help themselves. There is a saying in English, God helps those that help themselves. But the Bible says something different. God helps those who cannot help themselves also. Actually, this is the, reason, this is the place where man cannot help himself. Religion cannot help him. No God of this world can help him nothing of this world. There is no leader on this earth. There is no religion. There is no way on this earth that man could be delivered from his sins, from his miry clay. And David calls it a horrible pit. It's a pit out of which man cannot get out by himself. He needs somebody that is out of the pit. And that person out of the pit is Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone has sinned. Every person that is born of a woman has fallen into sin or is born in sin. Only Jesus Christ was without sin. That is why it says here, Mary conceived without sin. It is by the Holy Spirit that she conceived. And that what she conceived is Jesus Christ. He was born without sin. And because he was the sinless Lamb of God, he was outside the pit. And he was able to deliver all those that are in the pit. He could deliver them. All those that called upon the name of the Lord. 
when they lifted up their eyes and when they looked towards the Lord, they saw him there. All those that saw him, all those that understood for what Jesus came, when they called out to Jesus, Jesus stretched out his hand and he lifted that person out of the horrible pit. Like what David is using the correct words, the right word that he, that how a sinner is saved, David is using that language over here. I remember many of us, many of we have given the gospel to many people. When they cried out to the Lord, when they asked for forgiveness, out of their old religion they came out and they began to rejoice in the Lord as a new person. We have seen so many lives changed because they called out to the Lord. How did they call out to the Lord? Because somebody told them. When somebody told them that they were able to call out to the Lord, they were able to stretch out the hand, hold the hand of the Lord and come out. Many times while explaining the gospel we keep sharing, we are all like in a big pond of sin, all of us. Every man upon this earth is like in a big pond of sin. And all of us are drowning in that pond of sin. Only a person that is outside the pond can help the, those that are inside. No sinner can save another sinner. No sinner could die for another sinner. It needs a person without sin to die for a sinner. And Jesus is that person who was outside, who was able to stretch out his hand to those that will call upon his name and they would, he would bring them out of, the, out of the pond of sin. He would bring them out. And that is the gospel. That is the gospel. When we share the gospel, actually we are telling people, there is somebody that can save you. There is somebody that died for you. There is somebody that will pull you out of your mess. And that person is Jesus. We direct people to Jesus, not to ourselves. Many times, even leaders, they want to direct people to themselves. All the political circles where we see all the wrangling going on, pulling and tucking these political parties, it's actually only for prominence, for the chair, for name, for position. They do that. But that is not with Jesus. And it should not be with us also. We do not direct people towards ourselves. There are even leaders and pastors that do that. They try to attract attention towards themselves. But that is wrong. When we uh, bring a person to the Lord Jesus, we direct him to Jesus, who alone can save. He says, I am the, the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. That is the words of Jesus. So that is what David is saying here. Actually, he is saying what a sinner goes through. He comes out of the horrible pit. He comes out of the miry clay and he sets his feet upon a rock. God sets your feet upon a rock. Rock means something sure that cannot be shaken. And that rock is Jesus. When we put our feet upon Jesus, we cannot be shaken. And then it says here in the third verse, He put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. He put a new song in my mouth. You know, when we are free, when we are out of problem, when we are out of sin, then a song begins to come from our mouth. We begin to sing with joy. We begin to praise the Lord. We begin to call upon the name of the Lord through song and praises and worship. And that is the joy a believer has when he comes to the Lord. He knows that he has been saved from such a terrible situation, such a terrible life, such a terrible future. When Jesus redeemed and brought us out, it turns our sorrow into joy, our mourning into dancing. We start, when we were mourning, we go into dancing. And it says sorrow is in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Sorrow in the night means when we are in sin, it is night, it is dark. But when we come to Jesus, it is light. It is like coming into the morning. And that is what David beautifully says here. And in the fourth verse it says, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. That is the blessed person, the person that puts their trust in Jesus. They are blessed. They are blessed. Because on their own they cannot do anything. And does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works. Many wonderful works God begins to do when a sinner comes back to the Lord. When we come back to the Lord and we put our trust in Him, they said, all those that put their trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. Hallelujah. And that is what David says. And here verse 6 and 7 it says, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire. My ears you have opened, burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. 
Again, it is the gospel that David is forcing in the spirit. 800 years before Jesus was born, David wrote this psalm. It's a sacrifice and offering you don't want. It is not that we take some big sacrifice and offer to the Lord. It is not offering bulls and goats and all these things before the Lord. The Lord does not want that. He says, burnt offering you did not require. Then I said, behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. Behold, I come. This is the word of Jesus. See, I come. It's written about me. All that offering that is being offered in the temples, all that offering that is being offered in the Old Testament, that is all pointing towards the real Lamb of God that is coming and His name is Jesus. He says, in the book it is written about me. I am the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And therefore David is beautifully directing us to the Lord through this beautiful psalm. May the Lord add the blessing of His wonderful psalm to us. The beautiful psalm. In verse 8 it says, I delight to do your will, O God, and your law is within my heart. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you by the psalm, Psalm 40. God bless you.